Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on our Wednesday webinar. Today, I'm Janice Kupfer. I'm the VP of Marketing of TripWorks. Um, we're a booking platform for the travel and tourist industry. Today, I'm so pleased to have with us Nikki Knight of US Acts um, and Melanie Janone of um, TripWorks. She is one of our account executives. Um, today, we are going to do a, a bit of a format of a question and answer series between Melanie and Nikki um, to talk about um, the super growth of US Acts since their first opening in March of, is it 2020? It's when you opened yeah. your first? Yes. Um, they are now up to four locations and they have four mobile units as well. Um, they are a very happy TripWorks customer and we are happy to have them. And so Nikki is going to talk to us about how USX Acts got to where they are today and how TripWorks helped them to do that. Um, so with that, I will say again, thank you guys for being here and joining us and thank you to Nikki and to Melanie. Turning it over to you guys. Thanks, Thanks Janice. Janice. Um, yeah, so great to meet everybody. Thank you all for joining. It looks like there's some people still coming in. So um, yeah, I guess we can just jump right in, Nikki. Thank you also for joining. Um, so tell us about USX. How long have you been in business? And then what inspired you to open an axe throwing um, company and get started with that sort of um, operation? Yes. Okay. So um, my husband has a background, Dustin Knight, in he was in the military with shooting ranges, and both of us really fell in love with axe throwing. The first couple times we did it, we couldn't get enough of it, so we were axe throwing everywhere. He right away was good at it. Um, I was too, but he surpassed me pretty quickly. So we knew we wanted to open an axe throwing facility. We went to a lot of different axe throwing places and figured out what we liked, what we wanted to do. We just knew we had to have that in our community. So we just had semi unfortunate timing. The first day we opened our first location in Alexandria, Minnesota was the first day of COVID, the first shutdown. So it was interesting because we already knew that a booking platform was going to be part of our business model. That was already something very important to us. Then during COVID, our governor was having reservations only when we were able to open our doors finally. So it was interesting how that worked hand in hand. So that was really a huge bonus for us with the reservations and also launched our business in the right way during the first shutdown. Got it. Yeah, I'm sure um, there was a lot of people during COVID that kind of either were just starting out or were seeing the results from having been in business and then everything, dealing with the shutdown and everything. So it's very interesting. And props, props for launching everything and, and getting through the, the hard time there. Um, so what, um, how many locations do you have now uh, with USX? So we have four. Our first location we started in March of 2020. After the second shutdown, or after the first shutdown, we opened our second location in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And that one we actually, and we'll get to this in a little bit, but that one we actually opened because of the data we were able to collect from our booking service, the first location we had. And then after that, we opened a smaller one inside of the VFW in Wadena, Minnesota. So that's a smaller location. That one's actually booking only. So that location is great because without our booking platform, it would be very difficult to run that location. And then I would say, finally, Fargo, that one is about 85% walk-ins. So that is our newest location. That one is a little bit, you know, obviously it's nice to have the booking platform, but the other three are really case in point of why TripWorks has really grown our business. Got it. And I was just going to, that brings me to my next question. So um, you went from zero locations to four and um, talked to, I know you were looking kind of at the demographics, like where your customers were coming from and booking from, um, but talk to us about your volume now and um, at the different locations, um, you know, are you seeing your business increasing, especially after COVID? Um, Tell me about what that's like. 
So honestly, the reason our business grew so quickly or we were able to get off the ground after COVID is marketing. And I have a unique background or I used to be a TV news reporter. So when we opened our first location, we were able to do some outdoor stuff. Our mobile came into play. That was already part of the business plan. But where we ran into the most trouble was during the second shutdown, we had our business in Site Cloud, we had a mobile unit, and we had our business in Alexandria. And during that second shutdown, when our governor was like, zero, everybody needs to be refunded, we did probably $15,000 in refunds of holiday parties and just families and other stuff during that time. So that was difficult because we really had to stop everything we were doing. And Dustin and I looked at each other and we had the option of, do we sit here and be cold and sad or do we do something different? So we actually moved into a camper, took our mobile unit down to Florida and we left. Went down south, just kind of shut down everything. And during that time, I was able to, with my PR skills, get us on the news in like five different states. I was able to get us on the news back at home on some of the major news networks here, and that got picked up a lot. And so that marketing of being on the news was really nice because when we finally opened, it was like the doors just opened and people really rushed in. And that was so great to see because our staff was finally able to get hours. You know, they were able to see those tips come back in. And without that story and that marketing, we wouldn't have been where we are. So that turned all our volume into big numbers. Um, and that's really, we didn't know what we were capable of until that happened and that um, shutdown was over. So obviously right then we saw a big influx in St. Cloud and then we were able to up that marketing all the time. We we're able to get on the news for other things, have tournaments, grow our league bigger. We we're able to keep up with those holiday parties. Um, we actually have a limo now. We have a, a lot of mobile units. Those help us a ton in marketing. Our regular locations, we're able to turn those customers into mobile customers we're able to take our mobile customers turn those into big uh parties at our regular location and our league members like it's just a beautiful ecosystem that our marketing has able um like to turn that into this ecosystem without all of those marketing pieces we wouldn't have been there um and i think you asked me okay how does tripworks play into that and it's a major part for us um my background is in tv but also in radio and one thing working in radio we always talked about like cutting ads i don't know i wish i could see people like raise their hands who are listening to this but radio's not cheap radio is expensive especially like tv commercials if you've started to get into tv commercials those are expensive like I think the first time we had talked about doing a TV commercial, they wanted like $5,000 up front, and I don't even really know where that was going to go. I don't know how many people were going to listen. I don't know how many people were going to watch those commercials. And mm -hmm. I'm dipping my toes into the water of just putting that money out there and wondering where it goes is really difficult. And if you aren't utilizing your booking software, in that area, you're missing a really huge piece. And so I was able to see why did all these people run in the door once we're like able to be open? And in Tripworks, there's a button that you can, I think it's, I think it was already on for us. You probably know more in that area. Oh, are you gonna show everybody? There you go. Yeah, so the how, yeah. You, how you heard about us function, like we had so many people say, radio when we have radio ads but right after our tv news and all the stories we were on that's what people were telling us that's where they were coming from and we were able to actually see those numbers instead of just guess yeah and um i love that you brought that up and it's really interesting too because um you know we talk to a lot of different people and tour operators and people that are in the tour and activities business and it's always helpful if you have a little bit of background that you don't know you're not sure if you'll be able to incorporate it right because you were um, a reporter on tv and it's it's really really cool that you were able to take that 
and, and pull it over into your, your new business venture. So just like you were saying about um, the marketing feature on TripWorks, part of that is this section that um, everybody should be able to see on my screen here. Uh, what we're looking at is we're at the end, we're on the back end here, um, as if we were creating a new reservation uh, as a logged in user. And your customers will see this um, you know, on your website if they were booking through the widget as well. But we always ask, how did you hear about us? We have some pre-populated options in here, but you can add your own. So if you were doing radio ads, you can add radio as an option in here. You can add people as options, right? Maybe John across the street promotes your business. And if they hear about you via John, maybe they get a discount or something, but it's excellent to track because it really helps like you said, determine where you want to spend your marketing budget. Um, again, maybe your Instagram ads are working really well or your Facebook ads. Um, and this helps keep track of a lot of that. Um, and then additionally, uh, aside from filling out the how did you hear about us, we track all of that in a marketing report that looks something like this. So you can pick a date range, but this will show you exactly how much money um, your different marketing sources have brought in. So for example, if people are hearing about you on TripAdvisor, um, you'll be able to track all of that data here. I'll zoom in a little bit. But um, yeah, I assume Nikki, this is part of the reporting that uh, you guys look at on a weekly or monthly basis to kind of help you, um, you know, figure out what, where to go and where to promote your business for your different locations. So. Yeah, and I like that, cool. like the screen you're showing right now is you can see those actual breakdowns in, in dollars. Because if you spent three thousand dollars on commercials and okay, a bunch of people booked and that's cool, but it ended up only being a hundred dollars. You know, it's it's good right. to see that actual ROI on the advertising that you're doing, and then it also allows you to put more money into those areas or create a budget in that way. And I believe a couple of times, kind of like what you were saying, I put on there not just radio, but the specific radio stations because most people know which morning show they're listening to in the morning so that's nice to see right. if which radio ads working because I don't know about everybody here but we have different campaigns running on different radio stations in different markets and that's good to know too because some of our markets like this was kind of kind of funny but we did it's kind of like an auction I sell um, time and arrange to the radio station and then we get money back for radio ads on it and I was kind of skeptical at first but it was interesting because once we started tracking those numbers the random very inexpensive times that the ads were running did way better than when we spent a ton of money on a morning show I was getting bookings randomly at mid like midnight people were booking acts during sessions at midnight I'm like why why are people up at midnight booking apps during sessions? Like it's very unusual. <laughs> and they were all coming from radio ads from this certain station. And that was costing me very little compared to the several thousand dollars I had been spending a year on these morning shows. So I was able to take that money and just go, you know what? We're not gonna do those morning show ads. They're not really working for our clients. Maybe they're on their way driving and they're just not booking. So we were able to go with those less expensive interesting different times a day with the radio ads and that worked really well for us and i would have been spending so much more had it not been for these tracking tools and i i am sure that other booking platforms have this but i know there's another view you can look at where there's pie charts and different things and it's really nice to see those breakdowns in so many ways and tripworks makes it really easy to customize it um, or whatever campaign you're running right now. So I really encourage checking into this if people haven't um, in however they're doing it because it made a huge, like immediately you're, you're spending your money in the right places. Yeah, and um, I was gonna say there's a, a really good thing about uh, booking platforms that sounds obvious, but the fact that your customers do have that flexibility to book at any time of day, whereas no platform, right, they have to wait during business hours to call you. And so just throwing it on your website and letting it run is definitely um, helpful and flexible for everybody. But uh, to your point, yes, you can connect if you're running ads on Google Analytics or Facebook or Google Ads, you can link it with your TripWorks account 
Um, so you can track things like keywords that you're running. You'll see all of your keywords that um, customers maybe searched and then ended up on your website and completed the reservation. You can track all of that data here. Um, certain ad groups that you're running, maybe it's a specific campaign like you were talking about. Um, you can track which type of device they're booking from. So sometimes it's really interesting to see if a lot of your customers are on mobile or on desktop. Um, and then campaigns, ad positions, and, and everything like that. So yeah, it's a really diverse reporting, um, especially if you're putting a lot of effort towards your marketing. Um, so very cool. I'm glad to hear that you're finding this, this useful and, and looking at it and everything. Um, all right, so um, describe some of uh, your priorities when you were working on opening your business. What were the things that you knew you needed, things that you wanted um, in order to be successful? So we really looked at it as starting with the experience. We have been to so many places we knew these are the experience points that we want from the moment that customer walks in the door to the minute they leave our door. So we really focused on identifying what are those pieces of the experience and how can we use technology and how can we use the people we have and put this into a system that everybody is following. And so everything from being able to book online was really nice because you look at it from a customer standpoint, they are able to look online, pick their time, pay, everything's squared away. So when they walk in that door, our staff goes, Melanie, welcome. They know your name. It feels so personal and you're already ready to go. And then they can get you right into that. We had spent hours before waiting for a reservation that we made over the phone or got lost. It's just like so confusing. And it really feels different to be welcomed somewhere. And then from our staff standpoint also, it feels really good to know how many people are coming. You can be prepared from them. You can make sure that that experience is positive. You have that space ready to go. You have everything laid out. It's so personal for everybody. But then also, it is really nice for staffing. So you have the correct amount of people. I don't know if you've ever worked in a restaurant or a bar, but sometimes you have 20 bartenders working and you've got two people sitting at the bar or vice versa you have so many people there and you don't have enough staff and I know that's really difficult for people right now as well I see on so many of these pages people are having a difficult time getting coaches or having a difficult time everywhere just getting qualified people to be able to work and show up to work if that that's one important thing that I felt like booking service was able to give us is I know okay Saturday is looking really busy we're gonna have to staff that with a few more people gives us that flexibility or you know for some reason something's going on I can look at that data and figure out why we don't have a lot of people booked on Thursday and then we can kind of cut down that staff as well so that experience for not only myself but our customers and all of our coaches and all of our staff was really important and um, that personal touch for each person. And that's something when they leave the door too, we wanna make sure, and maybe this is a different point for a different piece in here, but that follow-up piece is really important. We've gone ax throwing before or just anywhere and left the door and we're like, that was fun and left. You never see anybody again. But being able to follow up with every individual person who came in how was your experience? How was your time? You know, like we talk about it a lot, imagine going in and having the best steak of your entire life. It was so good. And then you leave, maybe you'll come back and have that steak again. But imagine if you left, had the best steak ever, and then Nikki sent you a text message and was like, Nikki, thank you so much for coming in to have steak. Here is 20% off. Next time you come back and have that, it gives them a reason to come back, a call to action, and it really makes them feel important and special and that experience mattered and somebody noticed. That's really gonna get people coming back in the door again and again. And we have a really high amount of people who return. Sometimes like when I'm working um, in one of our locations, I had somebody in on Friday 
And then I actually checked up on my crew the next day and I noticed that same woman was there, but with her husbands. And last time it was um, like her girlfriends. And the next time it was all of their husbands. And I'm like, oh my gosh, were you here yesterday? They're like, yes, and we're coming tomorrow. And they have returned like three days in a row, which is crazy. I don't think I've ever done something three days in a row like that, but they had such a good time that personal touch and then that follow-up was so important. And this service allows for us to really be able to do that easily and allows my staff to be able to do that really easily as well. Yeah, excellent. And I was going to sort of share um, as you were talking, but I think just to cover on some of your points, um, maintaining your schedule is a must have and um and we're just looking at the manifest here on my screen so you can scroll through the manifest and like you said you can kind of look ahead and click over to saturday i'm just on today's date as an example but this uh definitely lets you uh manage everyone that's coming in you can see exactly what time they're coming in here on the left you can see if they owe you a balance um collect payment when they when they come in for their experience uh you know, you also have the ability to check them in. So if you just click here, you can mark them as a no show if they don't show up, which hopefully not, but you can also just check everybody in. So, you know, all right, they're here, they're with John, the throwing coach, and you know, everyone's having a good time. You also um, talked about some of the automations we have. So when people book through the system, they are sent a couple different emails. I'm just going to click over inside this trip here. There's a messages tab. So they're sent a couple emails, a confirmation email, which we'll, we'll circle back to this in a second. Um, and then after their experience, we send um, automated follow-up emails where we're like, hey, how was your experience? Leave us a review. And then with emails, you also have the option to send out those text messages. So everyone's on their phone nowadays. I don't know how many people are checking emails more than their phone, but the text messages are certainly, um, I'll speak for myself, that's something that I would look at before email. So it's definitely convenient. Yeah. And um, you can collect reviews through the platform, as you mentioned. So um, we can switch over to the, there's a little dashboard view here, but as you collect um, customer reviews, they'll populate in your dashboard. Uh, we'll just go over to the report here. This is just a demo account. So um, you can kind of just see what your customers are saying, good, bad. And I guess this account might not have any, but your reviews would populate here and you would kind of see the stars. Like if, did they leave you four or five stars? Maybe they weren't happy that day. And then it connects to the reservation. So you do have the option to call them and, you know, offer them a discount for next time or, you know, whatever it is that you'd like. So. Um, okay, and then tell me a little bit about um, dealing with some of the the people that might go on your website and not complete their reservation. So you'll see them populate here as drafts. So tell me a little bit about how you guys look at your draft or your abandoned carts on um, on Tripwork. Yeah, well, I will say before I get into the abandoned cart, the first time that I mm -hmm. saw this, I didn't really know about this function when we first switched over, but I had a woman call and she was a little bit older and wasn't super comfortable booking online but she made it almost all the way through and she called me and she's like i'm so sorry but i tried like eight times and i just can't figure out how to do this and so i was trying to figure it out from the back end and i went into this page and you can see where it says draft on there like where it says courtney and draft i had saw this woman let's just call her courtney i saw that courtney had like eight drafts and she kept trying to do the same thing but couldn't move on and so it was super simple for me to go i will complete that reservation from for you so i just clicked onto her reservation and then just added the payment for her on her credit card over the phone boom it was booked it was in her email i made sure it was in her email and she was all set and ready to go and that to her was such a huge customer service because we didn't have to start from the beginning how many people are you going to bring in what day what time like she already went through that so many times she didn't want to hear it again she just wanted it to be ready to go so that in and of itself was something i had never experienced before and that was so helpful for me to just hit in there all right payments right where you are add payment and then her draft was boom sent she got the email 
it was paid for on my end and we were all good to go. Um, but then I started noticing I was getting these emails and it said your abandoned cart was converted into a booking. And I didn't really know how many was happening, but then I got a gentleman call and said, Hey, look, all right, I'm going to do it. Just give me some time. I'm like, what are you talking about? And this gentleman had been trying to book a team building for his company, but I guess he kept forgetting. It was just slipping his mind. He was so busy. I get it as a business owner. I start things and don't finish them all the time. Well, after he tried booking his team building, he walked away from his computer. Well, he kept getting these follow-up emails. Um, hey, whoops, think you forgot something. Why don't you finish that? He got another email offering in 10% off. And he finally called me. He's like, all right, let's just book it. And so that turned in a customer who may have not ever followed up and booked again into a pretty large team building. I think it was probably 50 people for two hours. And that, I mean, he got 10% off, but for him, he was excited to have that discount. And for me, I was just glad to see him back. And now that same customer has been back a long time. So it had a very long tail. And we actually made a, a promo code for him. He gets 10% off every time he comes. But uh -huh. that, <laughs> Sure, I didn't even know existed and then we started tracking those reports and I'm not sure on an exact dollar amount but I will say it is a large amount of people that we are seeing with that abandoned cart come back again and just from my personal experience that's something that certainly would work for me as well because I do that sometimes where I know I want to buy something but I get distracted or I gotta get in the car or gotta hop on a call or something and it's a good reminder. I mean, you already have all that information and you can even call those people and, and wonder. And a lot of the times, I'm sure you've experienced this, Melanie, or heard from other people, but a lot of times those people maybe got really far in the process, but then weren't sure how to continue. And when you can meet that customer where they're at and help them book that, you're turning that person into um, dollars right there. Yeah, definitely. And um, we certainly hear a lot of good feedback about this just because it's, it's automated. So the second that the they abandon the cart, we already have their information. And just to go back, you'll see that in your account here. So anything that's showing as a draft is an abandoned cart. So they started the, their reservation and then maybe their computer died, their phone died. Maybe they just didn't want to finish. They, like you said, they might've had questions. So they abandoned cart, they closed the page. Um, what we do after that is we send three automated emails out. Um, and as you mentioned, we, you know, you can change the copy, but is your Wi-Fi okay? You know, they can shop now and pick up right where they left off. Um, the last email we send is a promo code. Again, you can choose whether or not to include that, but it's really, really great because doing little to no work, it is bringing you more customers. And um, some of our people will proactively call their draft or draft orders their abandoned carts, but if you just let them sit there, they're they're likely to convert after getting those emails. And we do have a report. Here's an example. Um, there's a conversion report inside every account, and this will tell you how many abandoned carts you've had. Um, so in this demo, there's been 59 automated uh, assisted conversions, and then you can see the net sales that it's brought. So just from those draft orders, people are able to, able to reach out to those customers and convert, convert them and, you know, brought them on a, a nice little uh, chunk of change. So they're definitely- uh, too, We did like a Black Friday sale where we said, okay, if you buy a gift card over this amount, you'll get a $10 gift card for free or something like that. And we had all of these people who were trying to take advantage of that discount and then dropped off. So that next day I followed up with all those people and just for them, I said, hey, we'll continue this another day. So they were able to continue that and that helped a ton. We were able to get a large um, return on that as well. And without this function, you have no idea how many people are using some of the, the you know, offers you give people and you don't know how to follow up with them afterward either.
Right. And I just wanted to jump in and kind of give a few more details about abandoned cart. Um, one of them is that um, it does happen automatically. It's triggered by when a reservation isn't completed online. You can set it up to trigger after a minute, after four minutes is standard. But if a cart um, was started but not completed after four minutes, we can start kicking off emails to that visitor, um, encouraging them to come back and complete their um, their uh, reservation. And then we get progressively a little more aggressive, again, by offering promotion codes or so forth. The other thing that um, TripWorks does uniquely with the whole abandoned cart is our reservation straps. Um, how it's different from everybody else is that we start our reservations by collecting people's information up front so that if they do abandon their cart, we already know who they are. We have their email address. We have their phone number. We use a tiny bit of AI to know a bit more about them from their online profiles. A little secret sauce of TripWorks. Um, one customer, um, you just heard from Nikki, and Dustin told me in an earlier um, interview that they're seeing about a $2,000 increase in revenue on a monthly basis just for US Acts. One customer of ours, Seattle Ballooning, said they see an 11% bump to their revenue overall because of the reservation drafts. Um, ballooning has a really high um, dollar price tag to it. And so when a reservation is put into draft mode, means that it's being starting to be um, abandoned. Uh, Eliav and his team will pick up the phone and call that person and they're converting 10 to 11% more sales. Um, so that's pretty significant. And that is a little secret thing that TripWorks Trip offers to everybody. I did just wanna jump in and, and, and mention that. Um, I know we're getting to the bottom of the hour, so I do want to talk about waivers. And so I'm going to jump back off and let you really talk about that. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, we were, the next question was just going to be, what tools are you finding um, most useful on TripWorks now that you're there? So we got the abandoned carts, and then, like Janice said, if you want to talk a little bit about waivers. Yeah, waivers is really important to axe throwing I, we talk to so many people at different axe houses how they use their waivers and when we first started we used smart waiver and there was nothing wrong with smart waiver we liked them but as soon as we switched from one location to having everybody who goes to all of our mobile units fill out waivers then added more locations i mean some mobile units will have thousands of people fill out those waivers in a weekend so we went with our smart waiver from paying like $100 a month to where we're almost hitting like $1,000 a month for waivers, which is bananas. And so we were using a booking platform that didn't have this. So it was one big reason we were attracted to Chipworks among others, but we don't pay extra for waivers. It's included in Chipworks. And I know you can modify everything you want, so we just literally took the waiver that we had um, our lawyer come up with and just copied and pasted it into there. And then we use a QR code um, for people up front, just like a lot of axe throwing houses do. But what also is nice is they are emailed, the waiver is emailed and texted in the confirmation um, piece of this, which is really nice because as soon as we switched over to TripWorks, we see probably 99% of people are done with their waivers before they walk into our place. Before, we were probably seeing about 25% of people filling out their waivers. So it's one less thing for our staff to have to worry about. And it also helps that front of the area when people are walking in and the mass quantity of people, they already have that done and ready to go. And I know that there's functions where you can text the waivers. Um, if one person makes a booking and there's 30 people in that booking, they're able to just text that to everybody in their party. Everyone gets it done all squared away. And then on the back end for our staff, it's super easy because when someone walks in, they go, hey guys, they're able to see who it is. Okay, it's Melanie's group. Everybody in Melanie's group is done with their waiver. They can see that, so they don't even have to ask. And that is a huge piece for us, not only to control the flow, but making sure that everybody is signing a waiver. It's super easy for our staff and it gives us kind of that warm and fuzzy that we know everyone's doing it and it is sent out via text and email several times. So it's really difficult for our people, um, our customers to be able to miss that. Very rarely do people not sign a waiver. There you go. And it's bright red. It's like the first thing my staff are so trained to see like, oh, mm -hmm. 
quick. Drew did not sign his waiver. They know right away. And it's super simple for them to be able to, to get that taken care of. Yeah, and um, so while Nikki was explaining that, I sort of just walked through the process of um, what it looks like when a customer gets the email, clicks the sign my waiver button, and then we or open up this little customer portal and they can sign their waiver. I will walk through that again here. But as Nikki mentioned, we're, we're back looking at the manifest and this is a great overview. Um, again, very in your face. Drew has not signed his waiver. One person in Sarah's group has. The cool thing that you can do here is in addition to the automated emails, if you're looking at your waiver for today or for tomorrow, you can actually bulk message all of these people if there's one or more people within their group that have not signed their waiver. Um, so we have these three little dots here and you can choose to send a message to all guests. And then within your templates, there's a mess, there's um, a waiver reminder email typically. I'll just select the order confirmation here, but this allows you to, to say, hey, reminder, sign your waiver. You can even write a little note. Um, please remember to sign waivers before you get here. And this little note will set will show up at the top here. So it's just another way to alert your customers, um, quicker check-in process when you sign ahead of time and stuff like that. And then again, the customer will get this email, they'll select the sign my waiver button. It pulls them over to their customer portal here where they can view all information about their experience. Um, they can scroll down. And these blocks just represent individuals that are included on the reservation. So there's only one person here, but if there were five, there would be five additional blocks. Um, and then Drew can select sign my waiver, fill out his information, um, provide his signature, and then sign the waiver. And then that would update the manifest as well, uh, of course, to just reflect that it was signed. Um, so, so yeah. Too, one thing that um, we've noticed with, as far as the marketing, I use all of the waivers I export those into my CRM. So I have all the customers, every single person who's ever signed a waiver in our business ever. I have their email address, their birthday, all of their information. And that is super, super, super nice from a marketing standpoint. And now I have them all super easily and not just people who've made a booking, but every single one of our customers, I have their information. Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up <laughs> just real quick on that. Um, when we do have a, a waiver report so as nikki mentioned you'll have access to everybody that signed a waiver first name last name email date of birth which is really great if you want to send out birthday marketing emails um if you're running any any marketing campaign all of that data will be here so you'll have it you can export it um, and then send out communications that way i actually got an email from us Acts today inviting me to book for the holidays well um i just wanted to thank you so much for taking the time nikki i was going to open it up to a few questions and um let's see what we have um oh th this is pretty much more for melanie i noticed on your website that you sell gift cards is that also through tripworks or another site yeah, so um, Tripworks, oh, I'm sorry, um, Tripworks, yes, you can turn on um, the gift card functionality on Tripworks, and what that does is it allows you to sell a gift card. I'm just showing you sort of the back end here, but this gift card option would also show on your website. So very similar, um, you know, you can upload a couple different styles and your customers can choose a style, choose an amount, um, a default amount or any any other amount that they'd like. Um, and then they can just fill out the contact information and fill out the recipient's information. And this all is just run through the platform. Um, anytime somebody books a gift card, they're given a gift card code. So when that code is passed along to the recipient, they can then go through your website or call you to complete the booking with the gift card. Um, so yes, all of that is integrated and included in your TripWorks account. And it is great for the holidays too. Holidays for a lot of customers are are very gift card heavy. So it's always a good thing to turn on. Do you guys sell a lot of gift cards? 
Yes, we sell a ton of gift cards. And that's one nice thing too, is so many people are like, I have no idea what to get this family member. And app storing is really nice because it's a really, anybody can enjoy it. And mm -hmm. I like the electronic gift cards because it allows people to not have to come into our location. App storing is really different where most of the time we don't open until the afternoon and some people are trying to get their holiday shopping done in the morning. So they can do it right on our website and then they don't have to come in to redeem the gift card or call. They can book right on the website, use that unique code, and then there has there's no exchange. They just go on like any other customer, book it, put that code in, and it's all set. Where when we had a physical gift card in a different way, it was kind of troublesome because if we had a really busy day, the whole place is full. We have someone in coming to redeem this gift card. They didn't have a booking and that was difficult. So this was super nice, super easy um, for people to redeem and then for people to be able to book out any issues. Okay. Um, the next question, I think Melanie, um, this is for you actually. Um, do you charge the customer or the owner for your services? I'm, I think they're asking about trip pricing. Yeah, that's a very good question. And um, the answer is we have a flexible model. So it actually, makes it very um, unique for you and it's up to you. You can choose to put any fees onto your guests or you can choose to absorb the fees. You can even choose to split the fees. So, um, you know, by default, the fees are usually put onto your customer, onto your guests, um, but there are some people that do prefer to absorb the fee or again, split the fee half and half or, you know, whatever you'd like. But that is definitely something that we would work with you on and just talk it over and whatever whatever works best for you. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, an the answer is that and not that it's completely customizable yeah. depending on what your business requirements are. Um, right. And then, um, this one is definitely for um, Nikki. I would love to know what avenue you use to get news coverage. Um, I use myself. <laughs> um, so that's the thing that is is difficult if you don't know the news industry is how to break into that you know like when i was a reporter i got thousands of emails every single day from people wanting to get on the news you really have to know who to go to what type of angle to get on the news as a reporter there are certain triggers that i have like oh my gosh that's gonna make a great story or that thing related to current events where i can um use that person as the character to tell that story and so i think that my advice to you is if you want to do it on your own biggest thing is to just reach out you know make yourself familiar with somebody at those news stations or give them a call tell your story uh, to those people and if that's not working for you i'm a i'm a resource to help as well um, i would love to help businesses get on the news because there are commercials that people turn out turn out in their head. Um, they just turn it off. A lot of times they listen to the radio, they just turn that off. But when it's news or a story or a person, people want to hear that or listen to that. And news is just such a big way of getting your, your story told. And I can definitely help with that. But my advice, if you, know, you don't want to reach out to me or ask, which I would encourage you to, um, is to just start telling your story and reach out to those people personally. That's great advice. Great advice. Okay, um, last question is what different, differentiates TripWorks from your competitors? And, and I'll actually take that one. Um, so a little background, TripWorks was um, developed and built um, by a gentleman by the name of Aaron Fessler. Aaron used to own um, Speed Vegas, which is a high-speed racetrack in the Las Vegas Strip. Um, and he um, is a serial entrepreneur and a developer. Um, and so when he opened Speed Vegas, they needed a booking platform for themselves. So Aaron developed one um, that the company could use. Um, again, a little background, a little social proof. Uh, Speed Vegas grew to be a $30 million annual runway company and one of the biggest um, attractions in the United States. Um, so uh, that is the basis of the TripWorks platform, that pr pr proprietary booking platform. Of course, it's been enhanced and adapted um, for general sale. Um, but 
the platform itself is all in one, totally comprehensive. It's um, very streamlined and intuitive. We aren't just a collection of features and capabilities, we're a series of solutions based around how a tour operation, an adventure um, company, uh, hatchet throwing, um, it, you know, um, Aaron and the development team have truly thought through all the processes um, and streamlined things, made it incredibly frictionless to book, um, to book anywhere on the web. We have um, a very streamlined and intuitive booking engine. We have a booking widget that you can serve to partners. Um, we have integrations to OTAs. Um, we even will build you a website if, you, if you're interested. Um, so he has truly thought through all of the aspects of how one would uh, manage and grow a tour, travel, um, activity and adventure company. That is truly the, um, the purpose of TripWorks is to help uh, travel tourism related companies to scale and grow in the most efficient way possible. Um, and so that truly is what differentiates us. Um, we have some um, intuitive thoughts around how processes should be um, um, streamlined and they're built into the platform. Um, we know most companies need waivers. We built them into the platform. We made them unlimited and free. Um, and um, we've allowed customization of um, a very robust um, CRM platform, um, a great way to tie into all of your marketing channels and see exactly uh, where you're um, performing successfully, where you might need to pull back a little bit or optimize, um, what trips, what days, what um, months are most successful. We have dynamic pricing. Um, truly, um, he's thought through the processes that enable you to grow and to grow um, at scale and in the most efficient manner possible. Can't say that for other platforms. Um, and you've really got a, a significant brain who's powering the, and you hear from Nikki, um, it's worked for them. I mean, you know, obviously there's many more of the things that went into that also formula. Customer service. I can't say that enough. Like I've been had other services in different areas of my business, and particularly for people in entertainment or axe throwing, Saturday is our biggest day in revenue. And I have needed something all of a sudden on a Saturday where like, oh my gosh this thing happened and Tripworks has been there right away to help. And that is a huge thing for you. Like you can't lose that revenue and having a real person there that I can call or that I can shoot a message to. I also like that too. Like I spend so much time on the phone when I need help with something or I'm trying to create a new item or a new service for our booking platform that, to go to our website. It's super easy I go to my Tripworks button, boop, shoot a little um, message on the chat and right away it's usually Stu. Stu's like, Nikki, how can I help? And he's so fast, so easy, a real person and is always there for me. And a lot of times owning a business, you really feel alone in a lot of areas and it's really nice to have a real human being just there to help. And I will say there are a lot of booking platforms and a lot of websites, there is no one there to help you or they get back to you in several days when you need something that day. Uh, and I'll thank you for that and, and shout out to Stu because yes, we hear great things about him and the whole support team. Um, but the other thing is the onboarding, the handholding that happens oh. to be onboarding. Um, we have um, a team that helps us there. Um, we can typically get people um, onboarded within a week. Um, and we hear from Nikki and from our other customers that learning the system, it, again, it's quite streamlined and intuitive. Um, it's pretty easy to get up and get going on it um, within several days, if not a day. Would you agree with that, Nikki? Yeah, and even more than that, that was my biggest concern switching was I didn't want to do all the work again. You know, like I already did this. I already put in all my hours and days and I already have all these bookings. Like, what am I going to do? I don't have time for that. And Tripworks handled all of it. I really didn't do anything. Uh, they were able, the team just switched over everything for me. And it was just, instead of this, I just popped down over here. Super simple. And that was really what I was most concerned about. And it was no issue at all. They They did everything for me, which... Sometimes I feel high maintenance 
um, because I want people to do that kind of stuff for me. But Jeff Brooks was able to do that and didn't make me feel like it was a big issue at all. They just took care of it. Terrific. Okay, one last thing that I want to make sure that we cover is that um, TripWorks is a platform that um, allows a roll-up to a headquarters account, if you will. So if you have several locations that you're trying to track, that information can roll up to a corporate account and um, you can get a consolidated view of exactly what is happening. Um, franchises like to use us because um, it also has a payment process um, that um, feeds back to corporate. But um, so if you are, have more than one location, TripWorks is very convenient for that. Would you agree with that, Nikki? You guys yeah, I mean, we're, we're in the works of that. And that was another reason we switched over was because of that tool. But right now what's nice is when I'm on the road, I just have the TripWorks um, app on my phone and I just in see all of my locations from one place on my phone. And that's super easy to see. And particularly once you start to get those revenues up the top from other locations. But it's nice for me because I can see individual detailed reports, but I can also just see the whole thing overall. And that's so nice because not, not a lot of places do that. And for me, like Janice knows this, she's like, you're hard to get a hold of, you know? It's nice because I'm on the road so much and I don't have Wi-Fi. And I think a lot of business owners are like that as well, where if you're not on your computer all the time and you can't see that, I mean, there are other platforms out there that are only on the desktop and I'm probably at my laptop twice a month. So for me to be able to see all of that from my phone in a couple of clicks is like second to none. It's so nice. Right, terrific. Okay, well, we're gonna wrap up um, with the last question. Um, and um, I'll just let you know, if you guys would like more information about TripWorks, please visit us on our website, which is just www.tripworks with an S.com. Um, you can book a demo with our sales team or you can just get general information. We're also on Instagram and Facebook if you wanna connect with us there. Um, my email is Janice at TripWorks or marketing at TripWorks. You can um, reach um, Melanie at Melanie at TripWorks. <laughs> it's very simple. And um, some folks, um, Nikki, are asking how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely. So you can reach out to us at info at unitedstatesax.com. I think I can type it in the chat over here. Um, but if you just go to unitedstatesax.com, I'll type both in there. There'll be a contact us button. You can call us or email us. Um, either way, I'm going to put that in there. But you'll get me during the daytime or one of our people or Dustin if you shoot us uh, an email. Info at UnitedStatesAxe.com goes to everybody and then our website's on there as well. But I'm super open book. You know, we aren't, we aren't really connected with a lot of people, but TripWorks really has been able to help us grow our business. So we feel really good talking about it because it's something that just, it was really nice. I mean, it was, it was great to have. So we feel strongly about it and we're really open to talking about it. Okay, great. Hey, um, everyone on the call, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be reaching out with a follow-up email to you, but again, we invite you to visit us on tripworks.com or to email us directly. Um, Nikki, cannot thank you enough. Thank you so much. You've been a wonderful partner for TripWorks and we really appreciate it. And Melanie, you are just a wealth of information about the platform and the service and couldn't have done this webinar without you. So appreciate it. Everybody, thank Absolutely. you so much. Okay. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Care. Thanks, Nikki. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.